everybody, it's Chris from the Evermore podcast, exclusively on the Slide Rule Pass YouTube channel. And Newcastle United have won a game. I repeat, there's nothing wrong with this feed. Newcastle United have actually won a fucking game of football. And I'm absolutely over the moon. I'm sure most of us are. It was a very tight game, very scrappy. We're going to have a little chat about it, obviously, as we, as we roll on this quick reaction video. But I'm just buzzing. I'm absolutely over the moon. I can't believe we've eventually won a football game. Um, it, was, <laughs> it was a must win, in my opinion. I know we say this every week and we never do win. But, you know, the lads obviously did hang in. Keep the win, 1-0 win, and uh, absolutely fantastic. I'm over the moon. But if we just have a little look at how the, the team lined up to start with before we get stuck into some of the just some of my my views on, on how the game went. So you can see there, obviously, we started up to Bravkin goal, a back four of Trippier, Lascelles, Cher, and Dummett. Obviously, Dummett playing his second game um in a row from uh, his comeback from injury, which which a lot of people were a bit concerned about, or we really questioned whether he was going to slip in at centre half with Lewis coming back in at left back, but that wasn't going to happen. Lewis was on the bench. We had a three-man midfield, the John Shelby, Joe Willock and Joe Linton. Obviously, Sean Longstaff sat on the bench. And up front, we had Fraser and St. Max flanking our new £25 million striker, Chris Wood, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. But, you know, looking at the game in isolation, I suppose, it, it, the, the kind of pure summary of it was, you had two teams there. It was a very tight game, a bit scrappy at times. Two teams massively lacking the main goal threat. Obviously, Callum Wilson for us. And um, Patrick Bamford for Leeds. You know, we spoke to Phil this week on their fixture focus. Phil's a Leeds fan. And, you know, he pretty much said that to me in the messages as the game was transpiring, that they were massively missing Bamford. And, you know, we were missing Wilson as well. You know, but we spent 25 million quid on Chris Wood. And I don't want to do the ladder over after a couple of games, but <clears throat> his touch is absolutely awful. You know, I'm, I'm watching the ball. It's not sticking to him. It's bouncing off. He's, he's he's letting it slide by. There was a time when I think Melier dropped the ball and he was just kind of standing. It looked like he was looking at the grass or something. He just didn't even react at all. So I just don't know if he's trying to figure out his teammates or how we play or, or whatever it is. But he, he just looks completely off the pace. You know, and it looks like to me Burnley have had our pants down at 25 million quid. And uh, I, I'm really concerned that it might be a bit of a duff buy. Obviously, our owners do have a lot of money, so potentially it won't matter in the long run. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not convinced about Chris Wood in the, in the first few games I've seen. But we're not going to be negative here. Obviously, we've won a game. It's, it, it's all about the positivity. But yeah, there was, there was a lot of back and forth going on. One player I was quite pleased to see back in the lineup was was Joe Willock. You know, he gave his legs, he gave his energy. But it is concerning as to how low his confidence is. There was a couple of times he got on the edge of the box. I think there was one time when Sir Maximum cut the ball across in the, in, the, in the first half, I think it was. And he, um, he he took a touch. He had loads of time and space. And then he went and took another two or three touches. It dribbled away from him. Ended up going to Joe Linton. Obviously, he, he took a shot and, and fluffed it over the top of the bar because he probably wasn't expecting the pass. You know, as I've said before, last season with Joe Willick, it's touch and bang. So he really needs to get his confidence back up. You know, there's a lot of links to, you know, likes of Deli Ali and Jesse Lingard, whether they come off or not, who knows? I think it's going to be hectic as the, the transfer window closes. We'll probably see most of our activity probably in the last week of it. But it was great to see Joe Willick back for his energy. I think certainly in the second half, you know, when Joe Linton went off injured, which which was a real shame. And we wonder how long he's going to be out for. And that might force us into the transfer market as well. But I think in the in the second half, Joe Willick really put in some great energy, great work ethic. You know, he was closing people down. He, he was making himself available. But he was more playing for the team as opposed to being a real goal threat. He did get a shot off at the end, which was a bit of a team effort. But it was nice to see him physically have the conviction to, to have a shot. You know, so uh, there, there was some signs of him coming back there. He looked like he was tired towards the end of the game as well. But hopefully Joe Willett can grow in the performances and as the team has confidence from a three-point victory, you know, it might uh, it might make Joe Willett, you know, feel a little bit better as well. But there were some casualties in the game. Obviously, Joe Litton went down injured. He come off. Um, we're not too sure how bad that injury is. It's a real shame for Big Joe because he's been playing really well in that midfield role. Obviously, if we're missing him and we haven't got any bodies to replace him, that, that could really be a big hole in the team. But Sean Longstaff came on. I thought he did quite well. He grafted really hard. He's not got the, the, the most blistering pace of Sean, to be fair. But, you know, he, he made himself available. He got on the ball a bit. You know, he was he was putting himself about. He was winning challenges. And I thought it was a good shift from Sean today. You know, so I think, he, you know, he definitely deserves a bit of plaudits for that. Shelby, Shelby looked OK. You know, I was worried he was going to get overrun in midfield because he hasn't got the legs. But, you know, he busied himself around and made a couple of really good challenges. And more importantly, he scored the winning goal. 
it was a fantastic movement by um, by Manquillo. I thought Manquillo was superb when he came on for for Paul Dummett, who was injured again, and that's a real worry for Paul Dummett because you know he he doesn't just get injured and he's out for a game or two. He normally gets injured, and he's out for a hell of a long time. So I really hope Dummett isn't out for as long as as he may potentially be. But he didn't look comfortable. Uh, he knew straight away he needed to come off. He made that that signal, but. Many of us were expecting Lewis to come on. Um, I think Lewis is maybe still not quite right fitness-wise. So I think Eddie Howe decided not to do that, uh, which is probably a smart move because, you know, you might need Lewis further down the line. But I thought Javi Mankio was absolutely brilliant when he came on. I think he's really unlucky not to get in the team, to be honest with you, Mankio. I, I think he's a steady player. He always gives you six out of ten. Doesn't do anything amazing. But what he does, he does very well. You know, he marshaled Rafinha pretty much excellently as soon as he come on. You know, he makes a great forward run. He wins the free kick, you know, which leads to the goal. It's a scrappy one. You know, the goalkeeper, I know Mark's already tweeted it from a slide rule past Twitter page. Give us a follow at SRP blog if you haven't already, guys. But yeah, critical of the goalkeeper. You know, he shouldn't really be letting that in. But, you know, at this stage, we don't give a shit how they go in. We just want them to go in. So we, we get the goal. We go in front, you know, and, and you can almost feel the anxiety rising from the fan base thinking, oh, shit, you know, are we going to concede again here? But to be fair, the lads, you know, that they, they, they pushed on, you know, they, they were going for a second goal, whipping a few corners in getting up in the box, winning some headers like Sir Fabian Cher. So, so yeah, I mean, they didn't shit themselves like they did previously. And it was good to see. But, you know, Leeds did come a bit strong towards the end. You know, you know, Bielsa was going crazy on the sideline, just pushing them on and pushing them on. But I think the lads dealt with it quite well. They marshaled it quite well and obviously hung on for, for an important win, which, which is brilliant. You know, I think it's a mental block, as Eddie Howe's you know, mentioned, obviously, as, as the week's gone on, that the players are struggling to, to mentally get over that line to hold on to victories. But they've done that now. They've won a game. Hopefully, this this will be a turning point for them. ASM was a bit funny today. I must admit, he was up and down. A couple of nice runs, um, you know, cut them open a couple of times. I think he should have had a penalty, in all fairness. Um, I think it was a stone wall penalty. I think the fact that he over, over amplifies it and he reacts the way he does, uh, and he's just been screaming at the ref, I think, shortly before that. Uh, probably doesn't do many favours, but I'm, I'm amazed that VAR doesn't go and look at that for me. I don't understand what VAR's there for. If you're not going to go back and look at a replay where the lead centre-back takes his standing leg away from him, that's a stonewall penalty, in my opinion. And I would I would argue a lot of other teams in the league would get that. You know, I'm not saying that there's a vendetta against us, but I can't believe that penalty's not been given. But ASM was frustrating. You know, I think you could have easily hooked him off for, for Almiron. It, it's any point in the game. I think he was, he was quite poor, but again, we're stuck in that rock and hard place of, you know, if you take them off, you lose your creativity. But like I say, it's not a negative today. It's a positive. ASM didn't really turn up and we still won the game 1-0, which is absolutely fantastic. So so that's a huge win for us. Obviously, it, it doesn't take us out of the bottom three, thanks to Norwich pulling out an unbelievable win against Watford the other night, which I couldn't even believe that. That, that came out of nowhere. That, but So it does get us closer to getting out of the, of the relegation zone. Obviously, we've got Everton coming up next. It's in James's Park. Uh, they've just been beaten by Villa today. They're putting a good shift um, under Duncan Ferguson. So there'll not be any pushovers at Newcastle. Uh, sorry, it's in James's Park. But you just want to hope that this you know, performance gives us that confidence, especially at home, to, to really push on and, and try and get another victory, back-to-back wins, you know, which, which keeps us at the bottom three. And as James said on the last Evermore episode that we did last week, that if you do win these games and you do stay out of the relegation zone. You you are more appealing to players coming in, the likes of Lingard, the likes of Deli Ali, the likes of Zapata. You know, if you don't look like you're in the relegation zone and, you, and you've got one or two victories for pushing up the mid table, you know, these guys will come and they will want to play for us. So it's only a positive to win games and, and get us out of the relegation zone. But this has been fantastic, you know, a, a win. It's the first time I've ever done one of these. I think we've won a game, to be honest with you. Potentially, uh, I think the Burnley won. I don't know if we did one of these, but I can't remember. Wins don't seem to come along quite a lot. But uh, yeah, I'm absolutely over the moon for it. Really happy. There was, you know, uh, some critical things to take out of the performances, like Sir Chris Wood and, and ASM. But listen, fuck all that. We've won a game. Happy days. You know, let's push on and uh, let's look forward to Everton. So if you like this kind of thing, guys, please like and subscribe. You know, we'll be back on Monday with a bit of pitch pat that me and Mark and then me and the lads will be back next week forever more. So, uh, you know, consider subscribing, come and join us. We've got plenty of content coming and get yourself a few beers tonight and enjoy it. And uh, let's keep supporting that team, McCoy United. All right, guys, take it easy. Cheers now.